So there I was just being super productive when all of a sudden this Italian dude shows up on my feed. He's memorized all the country flags in the entire world in under two hours. Pretty impressive. But all I kept thinking about was, I can do the same thing in one hour. So first we gotta figure out how many flags there are. How many are we learning? According to the internet, this number varies depending on who recognizes what, whether it's a sovereign state, whatever. But I'm gonna go by what the US recognizes as a country. So that's 195 different flags. Maybe I'll add a couple more at the end, who knows. But let's start with 195. All right, but one of the first things we gotta do is actually see which flags I already know. Do I really need to memorize 195 flags? Probably not. I feel like I probably have already a sizable handful of flags just that I know from you know, knowing things in my life. And that's always kind of the first thing you gotta do when you're trying to memorize something or you have a challenge is to actually target what are the things that I need to commit to memory. Because if there's stuff that I already know or that can be logically deduced from other things that I already know, I don't need to memorize that stuff, so why waste my time? Step number one to memorizing anything is figuring out what you actually have to memorize. So if you're gonna do this challenge with me, which I encourage you to do so, figure out which ones you already know, test yourself, and then target the ones and say, okay, this is what I actually have to memorize, and then memorize that. So let's figure that out. Let's see how many I actually know. It might be less than I think I do, but we gotta try it and figure it out. Let's go. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is uh, a little test here. So let's get that going. Flags of the world here. See, there's 197 here, so um, whatever. You know, this is just to kind of get a general idea of how much I know. This is 18 minute timer. Okay, don't know. Uh, that's France. That Andorra, uh, Algeria, know. Kuwait, okay. Iran, Iraq. No. Frick. Damn. <laughs> uh, Finland. That was the one I saw just moments ago. Uh, the red, white ones are tough because there's This like, one is Kuwait. Kuwait. Iran? No, it's not. Nope. Iraq. Uh, Ukraine. I only know Turkey. that because of recent events. Bolivia. This one is a soccer team that I know has played. Is it Ghana? Ah, this one. I've seen don't this one. Don't know, don't know, don't know. This one is either Iraq. Yeah. That was just a guess. So many Russia? African countries no, that I Morocco, didn't even I think. know. I definitely thought I knew more than I'm actually getting. <laughs> All right. So 62 out of 195, 97, whatever you want to call it. That's not bad, right? What is that? I know about 30%. So really I need to know like 135-ish flags. Not 195, 97. Cool. So now that I know that there's 60 or so that I already know, that's 60 that I don't even have to look at. All right. So I guess now let's actually try to memorize them. I'm going to try to do this in an hour. Less than an hour. By the way, I wanted to take a moment to say that this video is sponsored by Mind Lab Pro. You probably heard me talk about them before. I've been working with them for the last year and I will be for the foreseeable future. Why? Because I can't live without this supplement. This is the best, in my opinion, all-in-one nootropic blend. There's a lot of nootropics out there. Some have ingredients that aren't that great for you. This one, all the ingredients are well-researched safe and best of all, actually help your brain. So if you need a little mental boost in your life, Memory techniques are the way to go. But if you need a little bit extra of an edge, I would suggest taking a nootropic. And if you were gonna take a nootropic, I would suggest taking this one. Or trying it out. Give it a try. Link is in the description. Now let's get back to memorizing some flags, yeah? Okay. All right, guys, I found this website. It's called World Atlas. It's really nice, you should check it out. It's got all the flags here. And it says, okay, here are the countries. There's 193 of them. And then the two extra ones, yeah, the UN observed states, Palestine and the Vatican. And then there's a bunch of whole dependent territories. There's a bunch of those, 30 more. I'm not gonna do those, um, at least for now. So I got all the countries I need here. Plus it's got all their facts. It's a really nice website. And uh, I'm gonna set a timer here and uh, I'm gonna time lapse this so you don't get bored. <laughs> going, all right. Okay. 
All right, 16 minutes. Now I'm gonna do a review. That's how I typically will do long-term kind of big content here is I'll kind of do my mnemonics, go through it, and then I'll do a review at higher speed. And that usually solidifies, I'd say, 95% of everything. And then it's just a matter of review over time to get it like really drilled into my long-term. So let's go back. So Afghanistan, Albania, Algeria, Andorra, Angola. I'm gonna call it here at 23 minutes. Now we gotta test myself, right? Let's try it. Day two. All right, so we're back on day two. I figured I'd give this information a bit of a rest so that I could, you know, take advantage of some spaced repetition, which is where you study something for a little bit and you kind of let it consolidate over time. It allows you to kind of have a better handle on what you really know and what you need to work on. So hopefully I know most of it. I'm gonna test myself or repeat the information to see where I stand. Um, I couldn't get this guy to be quiet out of the shot, so he's gonna join me as I type this. I chose another website here because the Sporkle one was kind of, the images for the flags were so small and pixelated that this one's a little clearer. So it says that there is, no, nope. it says that there is, um, I think like 196 flags. So I hope it's just maybe Kosovo and uh, what's the other one? Taiwan that I've seen on other lists, right? Depends what's recognized. Anyways, let's get started. Hopefully I'm going for 100% because then this challenge will be over. Uh. Yeah. All right, USA, UK, Australia, uh, New Zealand, Canada, um, Russia, Netherlands. <laughs> Damn. Nice. There it is. 100%, my friends. Can you see that? Yeah. With a baby in hand. Cool. It took me almost 15 minutes, but with one hand and the baby, I think that's okay. All right. So, you know, I think the most important thing to you as a viewer is probably the question, how did he do it? How does one memorize 195, close to 200, different patterns and relate them to a country's name. The basic idea behind it is something I've talked about a million times on this channel, and that's just linking. Basically coming up with a picture for something that you notice about the flag, like a particular artifact or design or a color pattern, and then relating that to some image related to the country. Now, there's a lot of countries out there. Chances are not all of them conjure up some image to the mind. So you may have to break down the actual word that is the country into something that you can relate to and then relate that. Let's do some examples because the way I see it, you know, like we saw at the beginning of this video, I knew a lot, right? I knew over 50. So those were ones I didn't have to think about. And I don't even know why I know them, when I learned them, where I learned them. They've just been part of my learned information since the existence of Nelson. And you will have your own, maybe more, maybe less. So. We don't need to learn those. And sometimes we can even use that information to help make logical assumptions about why this other flag, similar to this one you know, is not that one, but is a different one. We'll get to that in a second. Then there are just flags that make sense. You look at it and you say, you know what? That makes sense for that country. And you have a reason why. Those are simple. Then there are ones that have like an obvious thing on them, a design element, whether it's, you know, the shape of the flag itself, an animal or a series of symbols or stars, you can use those. And then there's kind of the category where you could do that, but then there's like five other flags that have the same similar pattern. So how do you distinguish between them all? Coming up with just an image for that one relation for that one flag may not be enough because when it comes to the other flags, you may get confused. So you have to kind of distinguish those images from others. Okay, let's do some examples. So let's start with flags that have like an interesting element on them that you can just use. They're unique compared to all the other flags. It's as simple as that. Angola, for example. Now, what did I think of? I've never been to Angola. I don't know much about the country, but the flag here, I see there's like a sword here kind of underneath the star. And so Angola, I think of like someone kicking and scoring a goal. So I would imagine that sword is actually like a foot slash leg kicking this star into a goal.
And that's all I need. So when I see that, no other flag has that. And it's right in the middle. I'm going to think, oh, it's like kicking a goal, Angola. Barbados is a good one because it has that trident right in the middle. And tridents, they're barbed, right? So Barbados. So in some of these, I don't even have to look at the color. I just know if I see that one symbol, boom, I have it. All right, I think that's pretty straightforward in terms of, okay, here's a flag with a pattern and some feature on it. Let me relate it to a, a country. But I think where it gets tricky, right, is when you have multiple ones that are similar. So let's look at some that there are maybe two that kind of look the same out of all the flags. A great example to start with are Bahrain and Qatar. Now they're different colors, all right? Qatar is kind of this maroon, purple, and white, while Bahrain is almost the same thing, but red and white. Okay, so, you know, it's interesting because I don't have to come up with an image to help me remember that when I see that little diagonal split white and some other color, it's gotta be Bahrain or Qatar. Just the fact that I notice these two flags are similar is almost enough to help me remember that it's one of those two countries. But how do I tell the difference, right? So Bahrain, I might think something related to red. Why would Bahrain be red? Maybe it's raining red. Qatar, I think it's actually pronounced cut cutter, right? Um, so maybe, you know, when you cut someone, it's like a deeper maroon blood. What about something like Belgium and Germany, right? Same exact colors, black, yellow, and red for Belgium, right? Black, yellow, and red vertically, while Germany is black, red, and yellow. Now the order is different but on a quick glance, you could easily get confused. Now I know what the colors are of both of those country flags. I don't have to remember that, oh, that the black and the yellow and the red. It's just the positioning, right? So I can remember this. I think Belgium, I think Belgium fries, des frites, right? So fries usually come vertically, right? In your little fry container. So when I see that Belgium, Germany colors, and I see them vertically, I've got to know it's Belgium because of the fries. And that's enough, right? I don't even need to have anything for Germany because if it's not vertical, then it's got to be Germany. And if it's vertical, we got fries, it's Belgium. Now, what about ones that there's multiple? So there's some categories of flags where there's, you know, maybe four to five to six that are very similar and easily confused. Okay, a very common one are the ones that are split in two colors, white and red, namely Indonesia, Monaco, Singapore, and Poland. Now, the way you can tell the difference is that Monaco is kind of the weirdest shape one. And you can remember that because it's kind of like a small, weird country on its own. So it's gonna have kind of a different flag, let's say. Both Indonesia and Monaco have the red on the top, okay? Poland has the red on the bottom. And then Singapore has the red on the top, but it has some symbols, some stars and stuff. So the way I remember it is that Poland is gonna have the red on the bottom because you stick a pole in the ground. And then I know just the other three are always gonna have the red on the top. I know I can distinguish that it's Monaco versus Indonesia. If the flag is shaped weird, then I know it's Monaco, it's more like a square. And then to tell between Indonesia and Singapore, Singapore, I think of singing, it's basically Indonesia, but people are singing there, right? So when you sing, you have stars and, and things coming out of your mouth, right? So I could see like something with singing, might have a little more ornateness to it. And then finally, let's do one big horrible example, and that's the ones that are all red, white, and blue, right? So what, you have Russia, you have France, you have the Netherlands, Luxembourg. I think those are the only four with just the colors. And then you have some that are the same, red, white, and blue, but with some kind of feature on them, like Croatia, Paraguay, Slovakia, or Slovenia. The ones that have symbols on them, you know, you can almost forget that they're red, white, and blue. Don't, don't confuse yourself. Just look at something about the symbol and distinguish it from the others. Now, France, I mean, most people know the French flag. It's just super iconic. It's the blue, white, and the red. Vertical. Right, and, and if again, if you wanna remember that's vertical, maybe think of Eiffel Tower, the Arc de Triomphe, those are all very vertical structures, so maybe that's what helps you remember that. But I think the tricky ones to remember are maybe Russia, uh, Luxembourg, and the Netherlands, especially Luxembourg and Netherlands because they are exactly red, white, and blue, but the Luxembourg color for blue is a little more dainty. Um, and I might think, okay, Luxembourg, I think of something luxurious, but that blue just does not look luxurious. It's like they cut some costs at the sake of luxury. So whenever I see that kind of funny off blue, it's not a very royal blue, I think, ah, that's, that's the luxury-less uh, Luxembourg. And the other one is the Netherlands. And then Russia is a bit weird. If you really notice it, it starts with white on the top, white, blue, and red. So you think of America, red, white, and blue, 
Russia's not going to do it like America. So that's the one that's going to kind of read off white, blue, and red. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for watching this video. I hope it was interesting. I love memorizing stuff with geography and I love that I finally put the flags down to memory because now I can start to build on that. I can start to do the capitals. I've never done all the world capitals. I should do that. Then I could do like population. Then I could do languages spoken, religions, whatever I want and just add it, kind of pile it on top of everything that I have, all the mnemonics, the links that I already have. I can just add to that story and just have this whole compendium of knowledge about all the countries in the world. How cool is that? And you can do that too. It's not just me. Hope you like this video. Let me know in the description what you'd like to see me memorize, what else I can explain how to memorize and make sure to subscribe and like, and I will see you in the next video. I'm out.